Good morning from my Christmas tree to yours. I'm casting love from the Surrey Story Garden Studios in Costa Mesa, California. And this is your holiday namaste today. Good morning and namaste and welcome to Namaste Today. I'm your host and spiritual life coach, Christopher Witecki. My modality is psychic astrology and my mission is to stand in my heart and help other people into theirs. This webisode is for your holiday special, Thursday, December 24th, 2015. And as of Christmas Eve, the great human walk has progressed to step two Capricorn. Hello, my friends. Happy holidays. I thought I would bring out a little serious cheer and, uh, and kind of up the ante for those viewers that posted a little video of me in an elf costume. I told you I'd do it. <laughs> I'm the sense of serious joy. I've got to. Besides, I need an excuse for an elf costume anyways. We'll talk about that later. Happy holidays to you, my friends. This special webisode is going to cover for really from Thursday all the way through the weekend. I'm going to give you some forecast on your holiday. And even though we have the holidays here all around the world and we do take a moment for love, there's going to be some breakdown breakthrough in this holiday weekend. In fact, it's going to be a little intense. This is a major dimensional shift for a lot of people, especially for anyone who is dimensional. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love this little bell hat on top of me. So let's first start with our daily vibe for today, Christmas Eve. For Christmas Eve, I'm predicting sunny and passionate today. That's because we are ruled by step two, Capricorn. Now, step two is basically the opposite of Capricorn. It's I feel. Capricorn is I decide. Step two is I feel. So emotions rule the day, and that means we are all very passionate, and perhaps our emotions might get away from us. So I think this is a time where kids might get too excited about Christmas. You know, you might have anxiety about the visa bill coming in in January. That's all sort of normal. But what's important is you're in Capricorn energy, which means you can decide it needs to go, and it will. Just like a Capricorn can shut off emotionally when they lay you off <laughs> or fire you, you can shut off emotionally today. So you want to be decisive about how you want to feel and channel that emotion. That's part of what today is. Now, when it comes to our mind, the I think is ready to open up to new directions. Step 21 is where Mercury is. And you know, step 21 is where it starts to get fun. And that means that your mind is looking for a new door to open with opportunity. So your mind's looking for the rules to change. And perhaps you're starting to think out now that the rules of change. So you might say that your mind is finally out of the box. Now our feelings are extremely passionate today. The moon is in Gemini and so we're feeling everything and in particular our mind can easily trigger us down the wrong path. So if everyone watched over my personal sensei network, I'll be sending out with texts that talk about monitoring your feelings and at one moment a climax during the day when feelings to go too far. That'll be a serious alert. Look out for it on your phone. And then what we're opening up to today are new boundaries. In fact, a clarity of boundaries. Venus is at step 23 Scorpio. That's the point where we start to really open up and our mind opens up. So in essence, if you have conflict, if you have tension, if you have anxiety today with this passion, your mind is probably too closed. And because it's too closed, it can't handle kind of the volume going through. So you have to open your mind to relax. And lastly, the Mars, the Gur, the male energy in us, is uh, today at step 24 Libra. Now this is probably what's actually causing potential drama underneath those feelings. And that is, is that each person on earth is ready to raise their standards of life. And really it's raise their level of peace, raise their level of enjoyment. This is because Mars is in Libra. And so we are now ready to take it to the new level of where we belong. People are also coming together in long-term relationships. Mars step 24 means people are falling in love and finding each other, which is a great thing. And you're going to see more and more of that as the light walkers start to meet each other and hook up. Now they've come out of their own potential issues. So if I were to wrap up today in a one simple joy quest, it would be feel out where you belong. 
Don't let yourself be anywhere you don't feel you belong. Be very conscientious of your feelings and what their needs are. You want to kind of just keep that innocence alive uh, for Christmas. And we'll be talking about here uh, when we go into the Zen Den, what you can expect for the breakdown and the breakthrough. But first, let me give you a little holiday cheer with today's topic. Today's topic is one that may save you through this weekend and may save you for the rest of your life. It is called Deliberate Mistakes, The Art of Rebooting Our Control. Now, I bring this up because I was thinking about Capricorn and I was thinking about how we're going through a regime change here in the next 10 years. When I say regime, I don't mean politics. I mean root intention. What are the root intentions of our decision making? Now, I would say in 1776, the root intentions were very clear. Separation of church and state, uh, individual freedom, that sort of thing. But with Pluto and Capricorn again, for the first time in 249 years, the human walk, I believe, will change its root intention. Now, what's interesting and how this applies to you, my friend, it is my belief that over the weekend, you may also change your root intention for good. Pluto has reached step 15 of Capricorn, which means Pluto is halfway complete with an overhaul of the world's political and power structures. And you may go, what? I don't see 15 degrees. Oh, well, Pluto's been working on the lower degrees. I would say the idea of uh, racism on campuses, police brutality, uh, the idea that uh, we are letting prisoners out for being over, you know, having sentences that are too long. These are all power structure changes on the lower half of Capricorn that Pluto's been working on. And I can go on and on and on with the little power structures and laws that are changing. As of 2016, you're going to find now that we start to change the big laws. And as I've said over and over again, I think that the presidential election is probably the driving force of this human conversation right now. But for yourself, my friends, you personally may have a power regime change yourself sometime over the holidays. And that's where I bring up the topic of a deliberate mistake. Because people are wanting to break out of the jails that they live in, all right? That is the jail of a certain family, the jail of a certain job, the jail of being unhappy. Because you have been under your own tyranny that you signed up for, probably because you thought you had to deal with it, probably because you thought you were supposed to, you didn't know you had options. But in essence, everyone pretty much has limited their options and followed these 1776 rules, which we have to admit, 249 years ago, were good, but I bet we could make some improvements. Now, in the same sense, over the weekend, whether you're interacting with family or you're just with yourself, I argue that when we hit the sun at step four, which will be Saturday, the day after Christmas, there will be a major personal breakdown and breakthrough about where your root intention of power is. And I would not be surprised if you manifested a deliberate mistake. <laughs> okay? Now, this is something that came to my conscious also, is that I realized a long time ago that every now and then I would make a mistake that I knew better not to make. I knew better, and I still did it anyways, even though all the evidence had come through. But then I noticed the ramifications, the karma, the changes that happened uh, from making that mistake. And in many cases, uh, my life had improved, even though I had made a bad mistake. It's possible that you or people you love will make obvious, stupid mistakes, and I argue it's a deliberate mistake. So as an example of a deliberate mistake, I'll actually give up my, uh, talk about my, one of my favorite movies in the world, A Christmas Story. <laughs> you guys probably like that. Which, by the way, I think this one inspired uh, this costume. I love this scene where he goes to see Santa and the elf who's been handling kids all day is all pissed off. She's like, come on, we've got to keep going, kid. You know, like, like this and her belting, like, so funny. But I actually bring up A Christmas Story because um, of the mom and the electric sex lamp. Remember that whole scene? Well, you know, obviously the mom is jealous and she just happens to accidentally break it one day when she's dusting in the living room. And I would argue that was a deliberate mistake. She knew better than to break that. And we probably all know at home or we all came to our own opinion that she did that deliberately. And I say, yes, she did. But she called it a mistake. And what was it? It was a mistake to get that stupid leg out of her front uh, you know, living room window is what it was. The point is, is that a lot of people this weekend may be making deliberate stupid mistakes. And rather than respond to them uh, poorly or overreacting, step back and see what's happening. 
you may be sabotaging an old power regime. And that's what I found. I found that when I was in too much denial, when I couldn't be honest with myself, when I didn't meditate on my heart and on my feelings, that I would actually make very much what I would call deliberate mistakes to push myself out of the situation I was in and basically sabotage it forever. People may be doing that because as we go through the weekend, we'll have step four on Saturday, which is the breakdown, and then on Sunday, breakthrough. And what might cause all of it may just be your family or, uh, you know, politics of the family or just the year ending and you realizing, you know, I just don't think I belong in this situation anymore and I want out of it. Now, you don't have to manifest a, a deliberate mistake, but I do want to give you this final word of advice. If you do, be nice to yourself and be nice to the people that make the deliberate mistakes because when people make deliberate mistakes, it's because their heart is just too afraid to go after what they really want. All right, so that is uh, that portion of the lecture. Let's put out to you, though, a 5 o'clock question to help you about this concept of deliberate mistakes. Here's the first one. Did you ever make a mistake that actually ended in your favor? And the follow-up, did you judge this mistake as positive or negative? Now, I'm just going to say I have too many deliberate mistakes to list here. But I will share with you, after my Christmas story, story of the mom, that's a great example, that I used to feel really bad about mistakes I made, and I used to punish myself inside over and over for the mistake. And this was like, a, I think, a primitive way of keeping myself in line. But what I've come to realize is all mistakes are actually positive. They always are positive. They're never negative because they either teach you uh, that you're right or they teach you that you're wrong. But either way, they're always a take, like a taken film that just was a mistake, which means you'll take it again. So no matter what happens, follow your heart. And like I said in the first portion of this, feel where you belong. Because if you stay focused on where you feel you belong this weekend, you won't have a mistake. All right, my friends, let's move on to our Christmas Zen Den. And then I have the winners of three free readings who sign up for Serious Joy. So keep streaming. And welcome to the Zen Den. Before we begin, let me just go in real quickly with my guides. I invite you also to take a deep breath and release your tension and open up to your intuition at the same time. Okay, <clears throat> so um, actually, you know, remember it was raining a couple days ago? Well, that little graphic thing, I kind of like. It works out easier, it's easier to shoot, and it's easier in post-production. So go figure. Maybe that was a deliberate mistake <laughs> to wait to wait to the rain. So the first thing that comes really uh, is Neptune. They, they're talking about um, uh, the Neptune, I think Neptune and Chiron, which are working in Pisces. And you know, uh, Christmas itself is step three, and uh, today we're at step two. So just to kind of go through the weekend, today, Christmas Eve, it's step two. Today's a very emotional day, and today your emotions are going to want to get out. Now, at the same time, the moon is in Gemini, in the high degrees of Gemini. So uh, this means that our emotions are uh, easily triggered by ideas, easily triggered by conversation. This is where your feelings start replaying dialogue in your head of some fight over and over and over again, and it really affects you this time, that sort of thing. What's important is you really want to manage your emotional tone. And when I went into my guides just now, I was like, what do you want to talk about? And they're like, Neptune. I'm like, Neptune? <laughs> like, that's a, you couldn't see it on camera. That's the attitude I gave. I'm like, what's the deal with Neptune? Like, but the whole point is uh, mercy, compassion. You know, to, the thing about our Capricorn energy is, is that we hold on to our decisions. And when we decide to let go of our decisions, because those decisions were our stability, because those decisions were our control, we have a temporary loss of power while we're floating between the first regime and the second. So what the guides were saying was, in that temporary loss of power, can you guess what their guidance is? Yes, throw it to spirit. Find that place of peace inside of yourself and let it go. 
it's okay are the magic words this weekend. It's okay that you were this. It's okay that you were that. The only thing that matters is that you're going this way. It's okay you made this deliberate mistake. It's okay that person made that deliberate mistake because you're just going to keep floating on this way. And this is how we uh, make it from one mountain to the other, which is what a regime is in Capricorn. You're either top of one mountain or you're top of another. So spirit guides are saying to be uh, let it go and let it flow and be compassionate to yourself, uh, particularly Christmas Eve into Christmas Day. Um, let me just ask if there's anything else for this day. No. I'm going to move on actually to the next day and do a little bonus for you. Hopefully it's not too much noise here taking care of this paper. So on Christmas Day itself, we actually have step three ruling the day. And so step three is I believe. So I think if you believe in Santa, you'll have a good Christmas. You know, it's like whatever you believe in is basically going to play. And that's why Christmas tends to work for everyone. I don't know who, you know, who picked Christmas uh, out as far as what man in the religion of uh, Christianity picked the day. I know it's in history books somewhere, but the, at the end of the day, they pick perfectly astrologically because Capricorn is kind of a brutal energy and winter is brutal because of Capricorn. But step three is kind of jolly. <laughs> it really is. It's a Sagittarian kind of day. So uh, we're going to feel very Sagittarian. We're going to feel very good. And what's very interesting is as of Christmas Day, the moon goes full in Cancer. Now, I've been reporting astrology to my friends and family and on the internet now for 10 years. This will be my 11th year of, uh, oh my goodness, 11th year in January, my goodness. So one thing I've noticed is for like the last six, six years or so, the moon has been full near, you, near New Year's. So right on New Year's, we're kind of like letting go of old stuff and letting go of old emotion. And it's, it was so apropos because that's pretty much what you do on New Year's, right? Well, uh, now the full moon is happening on Christmas, which means that we're going to be releasing all of our negative emotions that we've been harboring between Christmas and Monday, just so you know. So this adds to the whole huge regime change, right? That's why I wanted to bring up. So as of Christmas, things get jolly and the moon gets full and I think we're feeling really, really good. But then as of Christmas day night, the moon, uh, the sun moves into step four, which is I belong. And that's where things may break down, starting Christmas night. Hey, I'm going to just do an off, not a, I'm going to do a plug here. It's not awful. It's not even shameful. I'm actually helping you. I don't know where my mind is. Let me dump that idea. But basically, don't forget, I am live on johnedward.net Christmas Day night. So if you're feeling this breakdown, you know where to log in, johnedward.net. We'll be live and creating some cheer. But there really is kind of a post-Christmas partum that may happen due to this full moon and due to the combined step four breakdown energy that starts Christmas day night, which is Friday night, basically. So we move on to Saturday. Step four rules the whole day on Saturday. And as a result, the whole day of Saturday is the processing. Now, sometimes what happens when these things are combined, like when it starts the night before, is like Aunt Betty or Uncle, you know, Uncle Flo <laughs> will like say something uh, that ultimately pisses you off, and then you, you spend the whole night thinking about it, and then the next day you're like, oh my God, what did they mean by that? Blah, blah, blah. Well, that's the kind of thing that I'm predicting might happen over the weekend. And so I'm just telling you right now, it's okay. Whatever uh, Aunt Flo and Uncle Bo said, that's the way it's supposed to come out, uh, was really just the fuse. It was a deliberate mistake they made, and they probably did it, to be able to separate and change regimes. In other words, maybe you shouldn't be in their regime, maybe they shouldn't be in your regime. That's kind of what's going to happen. So it's kind of a mixed bag holiday season this weekend as we are trying to get to where we really belong and where we don't belong. And that's the key. Where does your heart belong? Okay. Do you belong being treated that way? Do you belong under that sort of control? Do you belong under some sort of manipulation? If the answer is no, it's time for a regime change. What do you do? You say, it's okay, and you just float on away. That's what you do. So Saturday will be an intense day and probably the day where you feel like the full moon at its intent, most intense. So the high drama day is actually from Christmas Day night into the next day in Saturday, just so you know. By Sunday, it will be cloudy. Okay, I have to skip ahead here. It's one-handed. You just have to bear with me, folks. I'm, so, I'm not sorry. I'm changing my language. I just need a minute. So then on Sunday, Sunday, step five rules a day. So it'll be a cloudy day on Sunday. But the moon moves into Leo. So I think there will be breakthrough on Sunday. Now, at first, the breakthrough might be some sort of broken heart. In other words, it could be, because this is a regime change kind of breakdown, you know, someone could say something very small or something very small could happen, like you didn't get what you want for Christmas or 
something really petty that feels tremendous. And what that really is, is that the last straw, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back, <laughs> right? Like uh, one of the three wise men's camels broke down. That's basically what it comes down to. And it's okay. Again, it's okay. Sometimes we need tangible evidence to move on. Sometimes we need permission to move on. And so the universe is going to be delivering permission to move on as the most popular gift at Christmas for everyone. So I just want to empower you with that. Now, my guides bring me to Venus on Sunday. I want to bring this up. What's interesting on Sunday, Sunday, is that Venus is at step 26, Scorpio. Step 26 is I feel whatever works best. Two is I feel. Six is giving, receiving, Libra, whatever works best. Once you feel what works best, it adds to an eight, you decide. So we're going to decide for good Sunday night what we're open to and what we're not open to. We're going to decide Sunday night after Christmas. But also check a look at Mars. Mars is also at step 26, but one zodiac sign behind in Libra, which means Sunday night we do a double sealing of the deal. Whatever happens over the weekend, breakdown, breakthrough, belonging, don't belonging, regime change, that regime change decision is obviously Sunday night. When both Mars and Venus, the two components of creation, male and female energy, both synchronize at step 26, Venus solidifying where the boundaries will be and Mars officiating where you will aim. So it's going to be a powerful spiritual weekend, uh, regardless of what you get for Christmas, all right? And I'll just end with one final little note, and that is Jupiter. In all this fun stuff, Jupiter, which I could, you could argue Jupiter is the planet that sponsors Christmas. It is the planet of giving, the planet of love, and it's Sagittarius. I always argue Sagittarius is a far more Christmassy uh, time than Capricorn. No offense, Capricorns, but at least they picked the Sagittarius Capricorn day. But the point is, is Jupiter moves to step 23, Virgo. And as you know, all week leading up to Christmas, we were at what? We were in Helter Skelter, step 22, about to break down. By Sunday, we've broken through, and by Sunday night, I think that you will feel and believe, step 23, feel and believe where life is going, and your mind will have something to rest easy to. So it will probably be a dramatic Christmas uh, holiday, but if you just ride the tide and stick in your heart with where you belong, Elf here thinks you're going to be okay. All right, my friends, let's wrap this up and announce the winner uh, of uh, our, our basically a drawing for people who signed up for Serious Joy over the uh, weekend last weekend. We put them all into this wonderful, uh, these aren't my grandpa's ashes, these are actually your names, <laughs> okay? So we'll be announcing here in the next segment. Keep streaming and stay tuned. Hello, my friends. Before I send you on your holiday, I want to send you with a couple of blessings. First of all, thank you so much for supporting me through the year. I am so grateful. It really is a co-creation, you and I. If you weren't there for me, I couldn't be there for you and vice versa. Uh, we're going to have a great year in 2016, and I'm really proud that we've all come together in this year. I'm happy with the community at SoulGarden.tv. I'm happy that everyone's talking to each other. I'm super seriously joyful about the launch of Serious Joy. And as promised, if you sign up for Serious Joy last weekend during our launch, your name is in this awesome barrel right here, and I'm going to pull it out. You will win a one-hour gift certificate for a reading with me. That's a $250 value, honey. I got to raise this year. And you can use it anytime you want through the entire year of 2016. Now, I recommend you go ahead and book it fast if you are the winner, because for those who have not won, I'm happy to announce a three-day sale for this weekend only on my readings. Normal price, $250. This weekend, $199.95. <laughs> say that again, $199.95. Now, it's interesting. I mean, I think people actually sit around waiting for me to lower my price because as soon as I do a sale, I book up usually like three months in one night. So that's why it's only three days. If you got some money from Santa in your stocking, you can get a reading with me, and I am wide open. I've opened up January and February, and I've set it up to where I'm on the road, so I have uh, readings available uh, in many cool places. All right, so without further ado, let's see who has won a reading. I'm so excited, and special thanks to Kevin. Oops, we had a little renegade there trying to get out, uh, who went through the work of cutting up all these names and putting them into a barrel. And the first name is, I'm just going with my psychic hand here. Um, let's see here. Stacy, Stacy Alspog. <laughs> I'm sorry if I can't pronounce your name, Ralph. Isn't that funny? I always make fun of people who can't pronounce names. Here I am, the guy doing it. <laughs> and I think, they're, I think her nickname is Anastasia, by the way. Uh, you've just won a free hour reading with me, Stacy 
ALS POG. Well, it's going to be on the screen. We'll put it on the screen for you here. Number two, we'll see what it is. Number two, I'm trying not to look. I'm just trying to grab on my hand. It seems to want is... Amy Fry, you're the happy winner of a one-hour gift certificate with yours truly. And the third and final one-hour reading is, and just so you know, all subscribers of Serious Joy are in this barrel, not just the ones that signed up last week. We entered everybody in because we are seriously cool that way. And it finally is, upside down, Megan Tarkany, you're the final winner of a one-hour gift certificate with yours truly, which is available, by the way, on Skype or over the phone and is recorded as a complimentary to you and delivered weeks later via MP3. All right, my friends, I'm so grateful for you, grateful for everything, and I'm looking forward to this new year. You know, there may be regime change, but it's for the better. I was born for this moment, so were you. And don't forget to come watch me on Christmas Day night at johnedward.net. We'll be streaming live, and I'll be uh, sharing some cheer with my friends over at the Evolve Network. In the meantime, have a great happy holidays. Remember, I love you, and live, love, be.